morning students now we will start coulomb's law electrostatic force between two stationary point charges in vacuum these are two stationary point charges as you all know there are two type of charge we categorize one is quantized that is q is equals to plus minus any that was the quantized and one was the continuous charge distribution so this coulomb's law is applicable only for stationary and uh, those which are only point charges that is multiple of e so if there are two stationary point charges q1 and q2 separated by r distance apart now why they are referred as point charge first of all you should understand this thing with when the size of these two charge bodies q1 and q2 is very small compared to the separation between them then they are referred as a point charge stationary point charge so the force between two stationary point charge in vacuum in vacuum that is there should be no medium then it is directly proportional to the product of two charges q1 q2 now here there is a product q1 q2 of the magnitude of the two charges not this not signifies the vacuum that is no space between the charges and uh, also this force is inversely inversely proportional to the square of distance between the two charges so if we remove this proportionality uh, if we combine these two then we got that f not is directly proportional to q1 q2 upon r square removing this proportionality sign we have to add a constant this is proportionality constant k dash so f not is k dash q1 q2 upon r square this constant is termed as 1 over 4 pi epsilon not now this is referred as f epsilon this is epsilon greek word and this zero stand for free space now you can understood very well this proportionality constant is given as 1 over 4 pi it is not e it is epsilon epsilon not epsilon is constant and this not signifies the free space and its value comes out to be 9 into 10 to the power 9 the unit you can find from here this is newton this is coulomb coulomb this is meter square so k dash has a unit newton meter square upon coulomb square now this epsilon not as you know epsilon is defined epsilon not is defined as permittivity of free space this epsilon is the permittivity and this not stand for free space its value if you calculate from here it comes out to be 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 the unit is the reciprocal of k dash that is coulomb square per newton meter square you need not to cram these two value it will be given because they are the constant now this coulomb's law is very difficult to understand you need not to cram it but you has to you has to understand that uh, how this will be uh, depending on the product of magnitude of charge and inversely proportional to the square of separation of between them so for understanding this let us take two pair of charges one is uh, two microcoulomb and minus three microcoulomb and another pair of charges two microcoulomb and six microcoulomb now what we have to do we have to plot uh, f against 1 over r square now this is the question plot the force between these pair of charges against not r square but 1 over r square so this is the force this axis and this axis is 1 over r square now you can understood from here that force is inversely to r square 
But if we talk 1 over r square, then it is directly to 1 over r square. So when f is plotted against 1 upon r square, both are directly proportional. So we will get a straight line. It is quite clear. But what is very important, first of all, see here. The sign, it is positive, it is negative. So plus minus will attract each other. So force between these two will be attractive. And between these two, positive, positive. So it will be repelling force. First of all, you have to understand the nature of force. For these pair, it is attractive. For these pair, it is repelling force. Now, if you talk about how to deal with the attractive and repelling force, it is quite clear. If you take force in positive direction, it will be called as repulsive. And if you take the force in negative direction, it will be called as attractive. The second thing, second thing is the magnitude as the force is directly proportional to the product of charges. So here the product of magnitude 2, 3, 6 and here it is 2, 6, 12. So its magnitude is less, its magnitude is more. So here for repelling force, repelling means for this pair 2 and 6, it is repelling force, so you have to draw a straight line in positive direction. And one more thing, the magnitude is more for these pair of forces as 2, 6, 12, so its slope is higher. And for these two pair, it is attractive for 2, 3, 6, its uh, magnitude is smaller, so it will have lower slope. So now this is for the attractive force between these two pair and this is for the repelling force for these two pair. Why slope is higher than this slope? Because the, if you go for the product of magnitude, it comes out to 12 and it comes out to be 6. Next is the properties of the electrostatic force. As you all know, this force can be either attractive or it can be repelling. It depends on the nature of the charges. What are the nature of the two charges? The force can be repelling or it can be attractive. Second, the electrostatic force inverse, it follow inverse square law. As you have already seen f is inversely to r square so it follow inverse square law the third is whatever force uh, first charge impart over the second the second will also impart the same force on the first but in opposite direction that is force of one on two is same as force of 2 on 1 but direction is opposite that's why we have put a negative sign f12 is minus f21 so that is the oval newton's third law the most important properties one is that these are central force you know what are central force the force which act along the line joining two charges if these two are of same nature, then they repel each other, you know very well. And if one is positive and another is negative, then they will attract each other. But what is the direction of force? It is along the line joining the two charges. That is along the center of the two charges. Along R, the line joining the two charges. That's why it is called central force. And all central force we know are conservative in nature. You have already discussed, we have already discussed it in 11th class that uh, central forces are all, always conservative in nature. The next is these are long range forces. Now what does it indicate? These forces act for a, up to a long distance. As you know, force formula is k dash q1 q2 upon r square. When it will vanish, it becomes zero only when R goes to infinity. That is, they can act up to a long distance. Next important thing, very important property, that when the two charges are placed in a medium of dielectric constant kappa, this is not K, this is kappa, Greek word again. It is uh, uh, 
look alike the K, but this uh, leg is smaller than this leg. So it is kappa, Greek word. So then the force between the them decreases as follows. As you know the force here, we have uh, symbolized F not. Not stand for what? Free space. Now we have put the medium between the two charges. Medium, it may be water, it may be a conducting rod, it may be an insulating rod. Any medium is filled between the same two charges at the same separation. Then force between them decreases. How? Let us see. Medium force between the two charges as you all know is 1 over 4 pi epsilon. Now here it is not epsilon not. Not stand for what? Free space. But now we have not put a not. It is only epsilon. What is epsilon here? It is the permittivity of medium. Now this is a permittivity of the medium. Earlier it was permittivity of free space, we have put not here. But now as medium is placed, so there is no not, only epsilon. So remaining terms remain same q1 q2 upon r square. Now we can write this epsilon as epsilon not kappa. How it comes? As we have defined the dielectric constant kappa as a permittivity of the medium to the permittivity of the free space. We have defined the dielectric constant kappa as the ratio of the permittivity of medium to the permittivity of free space. That is also known as a relative permittivity. You have heard about the relative density. What was that? Density of substance. Uh, to the density of water ratio, it was called relative density. Similarly, here we will define the dielectric constant as the permittivity of medium to the permittivity of uh, free space ratio. This is also termed as re relative permittivity. And uh, since it is the ratio of same uh, constant epsilon and epsilon naught, that's why it is unitless and dimensionless quantity. So. Now you can see in place of epsilon, I can replace epsilon not kappa, remaining term q1 q2 upon r square. Whatever I have encircled is the force between two charges in free space. We have already seen 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 upon r square. What is that? It is the force between two charges in free space. And what remains? Kappa. So, force in medium becomes force in free space divided by kappa. That is force reduces kappa time. From here, from this equation, you can also define kappa as the ratio of force between two charges in free space to the force between two charges in the medium. Now, this kappa has values as follows. It has one value for free space that is for air or vacuum it has zero value for insulator it has infinite value for conductor and its value is maximum for water that's why water is a good solvent its dielectric constant is the highest one now the very important term is the vector form of this Coulomb's law vector form how we define the vector form how we can go for vector form, you know vector is equal to magnitude into direction. We have already seen it in 11. Vector is equal to magnitude into direction. So, F vector, F magnitude, multiply by direction. What is the direction of force? We have already discussed. It is central force that is it acts along the line joining two charges that is along R. What is the direction of force? It is along the line joining two charges that is along R. So force vector is equal to force magnitude into direction. Direction is represented as you all know by unit vector that is R unit vector. So magnitude you know already 1 over 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 upon r square and this is the direction r cap. So this is the vector form or 
In another way, you can write it as follows: F is one over four pi epsilon q one q two upon R q into vector. Now here it was unit vector, but you know unit vector is vector upon its magnitude. So put the value of unit vector as vector upon its magnitude. So it becomes F vector one over four pi epsilon q one q two. It is R vector divided by R that is R Q. Now limitation. This Coulomb's law has a limitation as we have already discussed. It is applicable only for stationary point charges. What does this word stand for? Stationary point charges. As I earlier explained to you, these two charges, these if these are two charged bodies, then their size. Should be negligible small in comparison to the separation between them. Then it is called as point charges. Thanks.